moment of the afternoon. The ideas crossroad about recognition of learning outcomes during the mobility period. Hard topic. So we start with a little video from, uh, of a witness uh, from the field. Let's go with the video. My name is Pierre Touillon. I work for the 3C BTP, which is a national committee which coordinates uh, all the apprenticeship uh, system in the construction sector. In the 3C BTP, I work for the Department of the European Mobility. I'm uh, in charge uh, to promote the mobility, to help the training center to put in place a mobility action. I'm more specialized in the recognition of learning outcomes during and after the mobility period. The ECVET uh, system is a, a system uh, which uh, permits to um, recognize all the learning outcomes acquired by uh, apprentices after a mobility uh, period. Uh, we don't forget uh, that the uh, ECVET acronym uh, disappear, but the principle of the uh, ECVET system uh, stays. At first, uh, it, it was to give more importance uh, for one of our diploma, which is the Brevet Professionnel. We worked uh, with the national expert uh, of ECVET, with the uh, Erasmus Plus Agency, and they gave me some key information. The more important is that the, the letter C uh, in the acronym ECVET is the key letter, uh, because the C means credits means to trust and uh, to believe in your partners. Um, to put in place in a practical way uh, the ECVET in um, the training center, after the exchange with the experts, we have to, um, to put in place something uh, very practical, very realistic. So we decided to create a group uh, to uh, work uh, together to create uh, different tools, a toolkit um, with ECVET, uh, with procedure, grids uh, uh, and so on. In the training center there are some people in charge of the mobility and we worked with those uh, people to put in place the first version of the uh, ECVET. I don't know if it's the right tool uh, to recognize uh, the learning outcomes abroad in a long period, but it's a good tool. ECVET is something uh, flexible, in my opinion. It could be adapted in all different cases, but uh, the, the, the system um, stay, uh, I think, uh, a good way to uh, recognize uh, the learning outcomes in the long period mobility. We are very happy to work uh, with the Euro Hub Mobility uh, to put uh, uh, in place uh, the following system uh, after uh, ECVET, uh, if possible. If it's very easy and if you fail, there is no problem. There is no punish, punishment, okay? So, I'm mirroring, okay? So, your left hand up. And back. Right hand up and back. Again, up and back. Up and back. We cross, up and back. Up and back. Up and back. Up and back. Up and back, up and back, the two together. <laughs> up and back, up and back, one, and the other one, and back. Okay, now turn around to your neighbor. We don't touch neighbors because of COVID. And we do the same. Try to agree, I will just say what to say. So it's either up or across, okay? So up, left.
<laughs> up, right. Up, left. Up, right. Up, left. Up, right. Cross. Cross. Up, left. Up, right. Up, left. Up, right. Cross. Okay, last one. <laughs> last one. No, it's not finished. It's not finished. It's not finished. Most difficult one now, okay? This was great. You were absolutely great. Genius. And it's not always easy for intellectual people to do that kind of thing, so I know, okay? So now, with left or right hand, we turn on our bellies, okay? In one direction. Okay? So train first, because it's going to be difficult now. So train, it's important, okay? And now, with your other hand, up and down. And what's going on with the other? Whoopla! <laughs> yes, perfect, not bad. Okay, so since we will meet another day, practice because we will do this again next time we meet. Thank you for joining. <laughs>when what will which is the first words that come to your mind when we talk about recognition of learning outcomes which are the first words credit points inertia okay great so we will first start with a little presentation of our guests and maybe, Paola, you should try to see if we can get this system to function. And then on the basis of what we were saying, just try to see what's the most important for you. And then I will follow the questions to our dear, beloved members of the panel. So, Dita, can you explain to us who you are and what your specialty is vis-a-vis -vis the subject today? So, uh, yes, um, my background for this topic uh, comes from four destinations, as you see. I'm the director of the governmental agency, which is a part of public administration and works with all the development and reform initiatives of my country in many education fields and VET uh, in, 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 in it also. I'm the director of Erasmus National Agency, and I'll tell you after why we will name Erasmus several times in my presentation. Actually, Erasmus is for the majority of 33 countries which are united in Erasmus program. For majority of them, Erasmus is the only tool where VET internationalization and mobility uh, and exchange can happen because it's granted by European Commission and actually that is the most uh, powerful and, and most dimensional tool for this. I'm also president of All Skills Europe, and that is a membership association, and that is actually, uh, quite ironically, that is an organization which at the end measures uh, on biannual, no, in biennial event, and the next one is after six days in Graz, in Austria, called Euroskills, Euroskills 2021, where all our members, which are 31 European country, meet on so-called uh, young, um, young professionals competition, which is excellence competition, where actually, as I am as a board member and long time in the board, uh, I see how different European countries' VET systems compete among themselves and how they really perform in a person of their young vet learners in this international scenery where actually the tasks they have to complete are driven by international standards of that branch or sector. 
And that actually shows how we cope with all these demands from the industry and labor market internationally by our systems and by achievements of our wet learners. And um, as the Skills Latvia organization is a, is a part of, of my agency, I'm manager of, of Latvian participation in both organizations, in World Skills International and in World Skills Europe. Uh, about ECWET and its legacy. Yeah, ECWET, as some, some of you mentioned, is about credit points. It was thought to be. It was intended to be about credit points. Uh, but um, as you see, by year 2020, European uh, Commission actually repealed this, uh, this, no, it was repealed by the new recommendation, which doesn't talk about credit points any longer for that but about learning outcomes. Seven years, all 33 Erasmus uh, uh, program countries were working on this equit methodology, concept, ideology, to create really uh, uh, instruments how to measure uh, these credits or learning outcomes when our youngsters go to abroad for their training or education periods. And actually, it was a kind of, of uh, trial to, to copy the system of higher education because there, the credit points, of course, works very well because the time is a credit point in, in, uh, in, uh, in higher education. But uh, actually, of course, as we all know, in vocational education and training, time is not the, the measurement for what the learner has done what he has worked with, and what he learned, actually. And therefore, this new wet recommendation of 2020 sets the principles of learning outcomes approach. And uh, actually, the ECWET seven years period was very, very useful for this new, new look on, on wet mobility, because it set all the methodological basis, all the instrumental part, which we can use uh, very, very well at, at the moment. And actually, there are only three main, uh, as we call, gold standard for learning outcomes to be used for, for measuring uh, the mobility and achievements of such mobility is that you have to uh, do things before mobility, during mobility, and after mobility. And the main four words of, of all wet mobility, being it short or long, is learning, assessment of results, validation of them, and recognition, as it was all already mentioned. And the main thing which is so important in, 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 in all this, and all the previous lecturers also mentioned, is really how two institutions between themselves agree on these things agree on definition of learning outcomes, and that has to take part before the mobility. Then what will happen during mobility, and what, and that already before mobility has to be agreed with the partner country, uh, how it will be recognized in achieving the qualification for the young uh, vet learner. I have to say that actually uh, there is a very solid methodological and material basis for really doing that. And as, as there is already very useful material which says uh, quality in international long duration mobility, lessons learned from Erasmus program, which a, uh, actually concludes all the equate work, it says that for long term mobility, actually this is very, very important and it is actually much more harder as for, for short-term mobility. But Dieter, I five have to, minutes. Last, yeah, last sentence. Erasmus program says that there, there is now possible any long-term nor short-term mobility any longer financed by Erasmus program, which doesn't have these agreements, which are Erasmus learning agreements and certificates of learning outcomes. And that material is totally public and available, so we can do everything to really promote long-term mobility because we have a tool how to recognize the achievements during it. Thank you.
Thank you. And I'm pretty sure we will come back to the learning outcomes because I think this is really in the center of the whole discussion. So we will come back to this. Okay, so Andreas, move on, please. And I didn't recall early on, but we decided amongst ourselves it should be a three-minute speech. That's why I intervened. But we will come back to you. I'll do my best to keep to three minutes then. Uh, maybe uh, you can show the slide as well I've prepared, otherwise I might start straight away. So my name is Andreas Gabriel and I work for INFA. INFA is the French National Association for Education and Training in the automotive services sector. In France, the automotive services sector covers all vehicle related activity after production. We have a workforce of about 420,000 people and 150,000 companies in our sector and about 65,000 learners in vocational education and training. Our association, INFA, is managed by the social partners and the social partners have given us two missions, the design and the delivery of qualifications and the support of a network of training providers, among other things, of course, we've got other missions as well. But these two missions are particularly important to our experience with recognized mobility. So far, we have worked in the area of truck repair and in the area of car painting and bodywork. And we worked on mobility projects during the training for sector skills certificates that are delivered by INFA. Um, our approach was to work with German partners mainly. Uh, we worked with training centers, we worked with companies, a regional chamber of skilled crafts in Palatinate. And during the projects and the preparation, we mainly focused on professional activities and skills. And as you might imagine, it quickly turned out that there are quite a few similarities in automotive repair in France and Germany and in Europe in general. This enabled us to organize meetings with all the relevant stakeholders. When I say relevant stakeholders, I mean the training centers, the technical trainers, um, of course the mobility coordinators we mentioned quite a lot of times already today, and their management of the training centers, but also the qualification authority, authorities themselves. This was important. In doing these meetings, it was fairly easy to draw up partnership agreements, clearly stating the learning outcomes to be acquired during the mobility. And um, I would say that it's not only important to draw up the learning outcomes, but also how to evaluate and to recognize them, of course, in a project like this. I think there were key factors to our projects and maybe to recognize mobility projects in general. First of all, there was the commitment of the actors, the trainers themselves, the trainees, the companies. They had, had to be very much involved. Then what enabled us to make this quite Quickly and easily was the similarities in automotive trade and repair. I have to um, add this. But on top of that, what was important was the flexibility of the qualification bodies themselves. We, as a qualification authority, had to be ready to see part of the training of one of our qualifications be delegated to a training center abroad. And we had to be ready that the outcomes of the mobility are recognized as part of the qualification in France. So to sum up, you might say in our sector, recognized mobility is possible, but it requires the commitment of all relevant stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. 3.20. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> It's the, the pitch system, you know, but just to make it a little bit more lively. Okay, Alexandre, last but not least. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, so I'm Alexandre Vernet. I'm the vice president of the University of Montpellier. And how you can understand, I, am, uh, I hope to be uh, an expert in governance, not in English language. Um, I think that would be a, a diff um, difficulty, uh, um, an obstacle for the mobility because uh, we have some problem in the, each university to find competences in lang uh, English languages. Um, I could find competence on staffing, um, financial, and so on, but it is difficult to have the twice competence between the language and the, the skill. So, um, uh, an important point uh, on the diploma that is being behind the summary behind me um, that 
there's not uh, five uh, European uh, diploma, but only one. It is the first diploma, European diploma, uh, recognized by the national agency of each country, by uh, the five ministry. So welcome to the Charmieux Master. Um, of course, in order to um, obtain this result, we uh, were confronted with problem. Uh, maybe some regulatory issue at the European level. Each country um, has its own interpretation of the Bologna system. So I understand that the Bologna system will change. So, um, what for us has uh, been translated in a Cartesian way, license, master, doctorate, um, three years for the license, bachelor, and 180 CTS, two years for the master, and 120 CTS, and three or four years for the doctorate. is um, translated as well in European uh, country by a bachelor in three or four years, in uh, 210, maybe 240 ECTS, um, and a master in one year, maybe 18 months uh, and uh, about uh, 60 uh, or 90 ECTS. So it is rather difficult to, for us to understand this, uh, this, fun uh, this um, each other, uh, to simplement. Oh, sorry. And uh, to accept students uh, with a different uh, profile. So at the French level, uh, the regulation uh, forbids us to conceive a master degree with less than 120 CTS. We cannot. And uh, this master must follow a bachelor in 180 CTS. We can't change the law. Um, a master degree uh, allows the student to uh, do a doctorate. Uh, um, in uh, Ireland, in Spain, um, the, a master can be obtained with only 200 and uh, uh, 70 ECTS, and um, this master does not necessarily give an access to uh, the doctorate. So we have a, also financial problem. Uh, the fees for the master courses are very different from uh, one country to another. Um, in France, you know that the, the fees for the master is 243 uh, euro. In Ireland, Sometimes it is uh, 7,000, uh, maybe 10, uh, 18,000 uh, for master. So it is difficult to, uh, to, to understand for a student uh, which uh, register in, uh, in Ireland to pay uh, this month, this amount, and only 243 uh, uh, euro in Montpellier. Um, so we have difficulty with financial uh, grants because we do not uh, receive uh, grants linked to the number of students in France. So uh, what could we, how could you develop um, a master with 243 uh, euro? Um, each country imposes a contribution from campus life, sports and library from uh, 90 to uh, 350 uh, euro. Exchange student, uh, second enrollment, uh, are exempted from this contribution with just shame uh, in the country of the first enrollment. But there is no exemption for a student who register for the first time uh, in the five university at the, at the same time. Uh, five so minutes. does he have to pay uh, five times uh, the contribution? No answer for the moment. We have some technical problem because in France we have to print the diploma on the um, paper from the National Printing House. So we cannot uh, print it in a, on, on, another, on another paper. So uh, it is an understanding. Um, which is understandable for, uh, in order to avoid a falsification. But how can we print a diploma common for the five universities? And we have also some technical problem with the uh, um, software, 
because it is rather difficult to have five signatures on the same uh, parchment, on the same diploma. So, yes, with the help of um, the European Call for Project, European University, CharmU, uh, with the help of the Ministry, uh, the uh, Accreditation Agency, and the involvement of the Chin team, we have succeeded in building, in designing this master degree uh, in uh, 15 months, only 15 months. Um, the, Charm, the, the, the Alliance uh, started in June uh, uh, 2019, and uh, uh, in the 1st of September, we uh, opened the Charm U Master uh, with uh, the student, about 80 students. Thank you. All the records are broken, 6.30. <laughs> University teacher, normal. <laughs> okay, great. I will start again with Andreas, because I think one of the very important points you all raised was the story of the credit points, the learning outcome, etc. Andreas, from your experience in the automobile sector, how do you settle this issue? Because this is fundamental. And can you also make the breakdown between what is the university level, what is the non-university level, because I think that's what Alexander just was talking about. And I think this is probably at the heart of our discussion this afternoon. Yeah, um, I think um, to sum up our projects, I'd say we rather focused on a learning outcomes approach. We're not so much after credit points. We looked at the skills. Uh, that were concerned. And this was already something which settled quite a few problems regarding the transparency, the understanding between the partners. As you might imagine, as I said, it's quite similar to repair, repair a car in France and repair a car in Germany on another European country. And the skills that are required are very much similar as well. So if you focus on them and not so much on the credit points or the time taken to acquire the skills or the way you get the skills, it's quite easy to do projects like this. You had to look at this. And um, I would add as well that this builds trust between the partners. Trust between the partners regarding the companies that are also involved uh, with their apprentices and, uh, well, the institutional level, the qualification bodies. If you talk about the same skills, it's quite easy to understand each other. Well. I think that indeed the biggest value and the core of, of all this recognition and uh, an agreement and sending and competing and working in different countries on the same skill profession is, uh, well, we see that Europe tried several times to unify a lot of things. I remember CEDAFOP, uh, when it was created, it tried to introduce European vet qualification uh, system. It failed. Uh, ECWET system, uh, actually, we, we, we shall tell as, as acronym and as, as principle about points, failed also. So actually, being 26 years in, 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 in my agency, I, I just can tell that, that all the development, recognition, validation and mobility can be driven by institutional partnerships and company and, and, and school partnerships. Because where you can, you too can agree always, mostly. You can even agree if you are five or six, so t t tell if, for instance, five, six countries can agree on things, how they really do this recognition among themselves. Look at, at European universities. I mean, that is the, the mechanism where several countries, five, six, seven, agree on the master or, or doctoral programs and see wherever you, you finish it, you are recognized in our six countries. The same is the principle for VET now. Just the thing is that it has, has to start on an individual level, because we, we, we can't wait when, when, when Europe will introduce something unified. It has introduced the mechanisms and tools, but we have to use that at institutional and individual level between countries. And that's why I, I believe that long-term mobility for apprentices or in Europe we say wet learners, because not everybody is apprentice in, in, in our countries. Uh, for wet learners, long-term mobility will work out starting with small pilots, country between country, group of countries, and, and, and in that way. That is how also a world skills movement is functioning. 
it wasn't nor global governmental uh, structure, nor European governmental structure, who agreed that, that this competition is a standardizing uh, tool for skills acquired in different countries, but being possible to compare. It was a membership association, and that works really on membership very well. the key word, so maybe step by step. I think, Jean, you have a new job, because if I remember well, the European University was an idea launched by the President Macron in those days, so you know who to phone after this meeting. I think we all agree on this one. They have the presidency, so I think... Uh, and I, wish, I would just even go a little bit further. What would you think about a Schengen of apprenticeship, starting with those ready to, to join? What do you think, Alexander? Because I think you are practicing the university, the European University at this stage. Yeah, it's rather difficult to have mobility with students. I think it is uh, a big problem with uh, apprenticeship because we have um, the university, the student, but also the company, the non-profit organization, the public organization, the private organization. And um, remember that uh, who is the employer, who pays the wages? So uh, it is rather difficult for our small size company to allow uh, the, the student, the apprenticeship, to, to go uh, abroad and spend about uh, five or six months uh, not in my company. So it is rather difficult on the financial uh, statement. So I think we have to help this uh, company um, and also with the reconnection of the, um, the skill and the competencies. Uh, we have already problem in, at the university to recognize the ECTS. So uh, we have the admentum the, uh, of the, the diploma, but I'm not, um, I, I don't have to recognize the, the ECTS from a, a French university or from a, a European university. Um, I teach accounting. I teach accounting in the bachelor one here, but also in the master. So what are the keys, the skill linked to the uh, financial accounting? Uh, so it is, uh, we have to detail it uh, and to prepare from, uh, um, with a partnership um, at uh, le the, the first level and not at the European level. So we have to understand each other. We have to, uh, in the Charm uh, alliances, we, um, uh, we learn to uh, discover each other, to have uh, trust. Uh, um, we have to share the vision, the, mi the mission. Uh, and it's this, it, it was the, an important point. I work on the governance. So the first point was what are our mission, what are our vision for the training? Um, do the students have to pay? Do, in France, we are used to, to consider that uh, the training is free. 243 euro is free. Not free for everybody, because uh, citizens uh, already uh, uh, pay taxes and so on. So uh, it is rather difficult to, to recognize, uh, and so the, the admin term would be, uh, admin term would be uh, an important point uh, for the recognition of the skill. Key word here, recognition of skills, I think, because that applies to everybody. Andreas, you have been nominated advisor, special advisor to the president of the commission, and you need to give her a piece of advice how to settle this issue. It is German, so, you know, he, they can speak the same, the same language. So, Andreas, uh, you have two minutes to convince Mrs. van der Leyen and to explain to her what she should be doing. Now, that's an easy task. Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem at all. I will need one minute only. Uh, well... <laughs> Um, it's, um, of course, I think the solutions to these kind of problems, uh, you said there's maybe a Schengen of apprenticeships. I don't know if the two-speed Europe is a solution for every problem of the European Union, but in this case, it might be a solution that you start with few countries, with a few sectors, maybe that would like to work on something like this. And um, I think uh, the problem sometimes is that there are a lot of ideas, a lot of initiatives, and um, uh, there have been many ideas that go in the right direction, but sometimes you have the impression that there are too many of them and they don't really go until the last uh, step uh, and they really go um, 
uh, to completion, as you might say. So um, I think maybe let's um, uh, draw up, um, make a summary of all this, join forces and um, go straight ahead to something which is really practical and we'll go through to the end. Not just, um, okay, we take a bit there, this might solve a problem, this might solve another problem, but we have to bring all the approaches together to uh, take things a step further. This is really vague and I think I haven't convinced Mrs. van der Leyen, but it was a try. <laughs> okay, Andreas, but concretely, where would you start? Uh, what wh where, should, where should she start? Because I, I, we all agree, I think, on what he said, but what shall she do? First. Well, the first thing I think is this issue of recognition of the learning outcomes. I think the most important thing is there. And um, we heard a lot of things today. There's really a favorable context. We've got the political will, we've got the funds, and it would really be a shame if we go, don't get to the end because there's a lack of recognition of the learning outcomes in our mobility projects. I think we have to solve this issue and we, there's no silver bullet, there's not only one solution, but I'm sure that there are some solutions, we have to find them. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councillor. Dita, same exercise with you. Well, I think I've seen you. I've seen you, I'll come back. Oh. There is somebody here in the audience, the Spanish, in the first row, who wants to intervene. But let's give the panelists a chance and then you, you'll, get, you'll get a microphone immediately. I've seen you. So, uh, as I work for government 26 years, I believe in power and finances. So I... <laughs> <laughs> power, 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 because a lot of things which, which are good can be empowered uh, by legislation. Uh, if there is no legislation, then you can empower them with, with finances. So actually, the Erasmus program, as I said, for the majority of countries is the main tool for long-term mobility and short-term mobility. And there is both power and money. And the methodology and the criteria and the all descriptions how you have to really secure that learning outcomes are recognized and validated, this methodology is ready. And there are all documents, just, just browse in equivalent uh, manuals and everything is there. And the power, powerful thing is that in Erasmus there is no choice uh, whether you Think about learning outcomes in mobility or not. It's a must. You cannot send your young youngsters to France or receive in Latvia French with learners if you haven't agreed with the sending institution about learning out outcomes. Everything is in our hands. We just have to do it. We just have to do it. We are all part of the solution, I remember. So, Alexander, to the same question. You are the councillor of Mrs. van der Leyen, according to your experience. What would you do first? Or what sh should she do first? first? Um, for um, European University, we have to um, discover uh, each partner uh, first uh, and to agree with the mission and the value I said uh, before. Um, for the competence and the skill, uh, it is rather difficult to evaluate uh, the level of knowledge. It is more difficult to evaluate the, the level of competence and skill. Uh, so, um, in, um, in my university, the, 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 the main problem is to evaluate these competencies. Uh, and uh, is the competencies in France, in Spain, in Ireland, the same, at the same level, um, uh, what are the, the expectations of the, uh, the company? Because the expectation may be different also. So uh, we have to think uh, about uh, it uh, before um, mobility and before uh, uh, sending a student abroad. I will do something I shouldn't be doing. I will play Ursula von der Leyen. And I think you mean it is about trust? Trust, yeah, trust. <laughs> because that's what you were saying, Dita, early on. No, trust. I think we will all have different measurements. That's uh, not feasible otherwise. And maybe uh, the world is changing. We have to think different. Uh, as we said in France, we have uh, to, uh, to push the wall, but uh, without the roof falling in. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Okay, I would now, because I think this was highly exciting, and I think on this point, and I really would like you to intervene on this point, and then we will move on. Do you have questions or reactions on this point? You know, how can we get the system moving on just to get this mobility of apprenticeship? You wanted to intervene, or was it just an impression? I'll give you the microphone, otherwise people will not hear. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm Enrique Calvet-Chamon. I was a former MP with, uh, with Artui, and there we, we, we managed to make, he managed, but I helped him to make the pilot project, etc. And I was the, the coordinator of the uh, employment section in Renew Europe, act, present Renew Europe. And also made, uh, I was the, the author of the, of, uh, the directive on, on writers, etc. So, but I wanted to, to, let's say, to react to something who has said by the two gentlemen. And I was agreeing with, with, with Dita. Um, first of all, A, we are speaking about workers, not students. B, the comp professional competencies they are getting are not so difficult to be known by the enterprises. They will know it very quick. And many of the times say, it's not useful for me. But they will know it very quick. A welder, a pastry man, an engineer is different, they will, will be a little longer, but they will know it. They will know it, because the, the life, the life of the company depends on it. Third, and that may be the difference with, uh, which I have uh, with my admirer Jean Artuy. Companies are not philanthropic and do not exist to save the world. It's better for all of us and better for them because otherwise they will disappear. So, obviously, it's a cost for them because they have to form people. Fourth, and I arrive to, to, to the last one. Fourth, the idea is that the young worker go more than three, three weeks or six weeks because he has to learn, he has to, to and, and that's the cost for enterprise. At the beginning they have to, but on the, on the, on the job, I don't mean classes, no? they have to, to even show him the new machine, no? the, the new tool. Okay, and, but he has to come back because otherwise it's a simple immigration. Now, if we, we go and get something from the apprentice, is that, or the apprentice, he has to come back to the former uh, boss that will appreciate if he has learned more or not for the competitiveness of his enterprise. So fifth, that's not possible without the participation of uh, Le Medef, I mean, the, the, this uh, many company, and giving them some economical compensation. That's not possible. You can, you can, maybe you can find five dozen of uh, entrepreneurs that are uh, uh, philanthropic, but that's not the, 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 the mass movement we, we, we were doing. And six, and maybe tomorrow it will be another point, with six, but that is my opinion, because I come from this area, from, I come, uh, my first political uh, work was in a union, and six, if we are helped by the unions, organized, we, we convince them that it's good for them, particularly for the young workers, but they can also participate in the movement, it will be better. And I have no heard, he doesn't like it, I know, <laughs> I have no heard the word union in all the morning. And we are speaking about worker, employment, the right of workers. Well, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Let's give the floor immediately to Andreas, because from what I understood from his model, the unions are part of the whole exercise. So, yes. Andreas, I think on this point, this is really important. Three minutes were too short, maybe it wasn't quite clear, but our association, association is managed by the social partners, so the unions are part of our board of directors, and they are behind our initiatives with recognized mobility.
No, 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 he's not commissioned. National Association for Education and Training ah, in yeah. uh, French automotive services sector, actually. Uh, Andreas, I think it, it will be interesting because I think you really come from a very practical experience. Could you just, because you were very short, so maybe too short, so that's my fault, so I apologize for this one. Andreas, if you could just explain the model you are working in, because I think this is a very interesting model, especially after what you just said. Please, Andrea. Yeah. Um, so, um, to give you an idea of what we worked on, I said before, uh, it was with training centers, um, a training center in France from our network. So, we are a professional organization managed by the social partners, and we've got a network of partner training centers. And we worked with one of them together with a German training center, a German chamber of skilled crafts. And there we did the kind of learning outcomes approach in the preparation. We looked at the job profiles, so the professional skills, and we clearly identified what was to be done during the mobility and how they were to be evaluated. And uh, the mobility went very well. Um, uh, it was uh, successful, the evaluation. And after the mobility project, we recognized it because we are a professional organization, but we are also a qualification body. It was done during a training path that prepares for a qualification of our sector, of our automotive services sector, so we recognize the outcome of the mobility. And all this, of course, with our support, and I agree, it's easier if you've got a sector organization and a social partner organization like us that tells a company, okay, you can do this, and we are there, and we guarantee the quality of it. I think here, uh Cla not clashes, but gets together to, to different um, aspects. So the whole Europe is divided in two parts. So one is school-based vocational education system, another is dual, or mixed school and dual. And, and, and that means that in, in, in that case, France, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, Liechtenstein, those countries are really, uh, and, and that is absolutely, your, your comment is correct, there, the government uh, interference is not needed because companies care themselves. They need those workers and they, they are ready to invest in, in this mobility and, and apprenticeship. But most of the Europe is school-based system. And there comes this very nice word which European Commission is already exploiting for some seven years at least, synergy of Erasmus program with European Social Fund. And that works, uh, and that, that is of course the, the courage of national government to introduce in their programming documents of, of structural funds the support or co-financing or cooperation or whatsoever to, to these uh, mechanisms where companies are not ready or not in capacity to finance, but then these other funds do it. My French colleague Laura may, may, may comment uh, on, I think Erasmus program also is financing that uh, uh, trainer which is in the company who deals with that apprentice, who, who manages his time during this mobility. So maybe it's not very big money, but then indeed national governments who care for internationalization of VET, they install the support money in structural funds. And then it just works together and the synergy is there. The lady from the ministry, but if you could yes. just reintroduce so, yourself. Sorry, again a question, but I, have, I had an idea uh, by hearing you, and uh, because Alexandre Vernet is uh, from uh, a regulated profession, uh, so there there is a, a recommend, um, there is a qualification uh, recognition uh, sorry there is a compulsory uh, recognition of the qualification in Europe about the regulated profession perhaps you know that Mrs. Traitas so for example uh, for, um, uh, for someone from the medicine uh, sector it is compulsory uh, when a, a German uh, wants to come to France to work to recognize uh, his uh, Qualification. What do you think about the the the, the, the construction of a new ECT based on this uh, compulsory uh, recognition? If I understood you right, you talk about regulated professions, no? Yeah, yeah but then the the whole EU reg uh, legislation is there, so 
that is the one thing which is indeed is unified. <laughs> but uh, we have the, uh, I mean, we talk here, I think, not about regulated professions because that would be easy, but about all the welders, hairdressers, carpenters, and, and, and builders, and everything. That is the field which, from which the Europe's economy is still dependent very much. And still that is, is the one where we have to put extra effort to make it, uh, well, making Europe competitive. <laughs> so of course, that category, because for the rest, we are more or less on track. More or less, I say, because it's not always that easy either. Yeah, doc, yeah, but that's, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Merci. Martin. Um, just, uh, I had a question to our, uh, um, our speaker, Andreas. You insisted uh, on the fact that uh, you are not relying on credits, but on recognition of skills. You, so I would like to know how to measure skills then? What are your standards? Well, of course, this has to be discussed in the preparation of the projects and the partners have to agree on how to do this. In our case, to give you a very concrete example, the partners used an evaluation grid that was agreed upon before, and it turned out that the evaluation grid that we use in France uh, was almost completely okay for the German partners. They just changed one thing to put a little bit more emphasis on security and health protection measures. But um, it's really a part of an agreement, and once again, if you talk to each other, um, among professionals, they understand each other. The professionals really quickly understand what kind of skills are targeted and how to evaluate them. Thank you. I, I can add, the, the, the novelty in European VET systems is to divide qualification in units. And the unit approach is very, very useful for really describing the part of qualification. And yes, with points it would be easier, but here the words counts. So you have to really word it. What the uh, apprentice must learn, what he must do, what he must know, what he m must manage, what he must understand, and that's a lot of wording. And that's why indeed this learning outcomes approach in bilateral relationship becomes a little bit um, hard, not hard, difficult because you are dependent on your English language skill with your partner to agree on the same words, what it will mean for, for, for outcome. French and German, I'm pretty sure it must have been done in another language. Yes, I think there can also be a bilingual version and you can do the translations uh, if you have a common ground. That's at least what we did. And uh, just a quick remark on language in, in general, we also heard the testimonies of the young learners and this is always a bit of a barrier to mobility that they're afraid of not being able to speak the language. From our point of view, uh, apart from the institution level, even for the learners, they understand each other. I went to the workshops and I saw that they spoke English, French and whatever, and they got ve along very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions in the audience at this stage? Because then we move on. Do I miss somebody? Okay, just a piece of information which I remember from a former life, when immigrants, I don't know if it's true, but maybe Andreas, you can tell us, when immigrants come into Germany and they have some kind of knowledge in the car sector, for example, they are not asked to show diplomas because usually they don't have them, but they are given a car and they are, used, they are asked to repair it. And on that basis, they decide if that lady or man is allowed to work or not. So it's a completely different approach also vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the people than in other member states. Let's call it like this. Do, is, that co is that correct, Andreas, or is that a false information? I'm not quite sure about um, the extent of this, but there were initiatives during the refugee crisis as far as I remember, yeah. Do you work at the university level? And I think this is also very interesting that apprenticeship is feasible and even sometimes useful, or very often useful at the level of the university. Where do you see you know, the main solutions we could find at the university level? I, I think we have to develop the apprenticeship uh, in the whole fields of uh, formation, of training, uh, um, university training. Um, some uh, programs are professional oriented 
some are not professional oriented, so the apprenticeship will be difficult in this field. Um, so we have to develop apprenticeship in France and we can also develop apprenticeship abroad. I agree with um, the reflection about the cost of the, the training. Um, so we have to change the cost in investment. Training is an investment, of course, for the nation, of course, uh, for the university, of course, for the student, but it would be uh, an investment also for the, the, the company. And a company is not philanthropic, is looking about return on investment. So we have to, to deal with this. Uh, and um, we could develop uh, apprenticeship in uh, university. All how master are open to apprenticeship. And the company um, agree that uh, there is a, a real ex exchange between the academic uh, teams and uh, the company. So there is a return on investment. Somebody was talking about governance. I think it must, be, must have been you or it was lots of you talked about governance. And I think, again, I'm not sure uh, Jean has left, so I will, I will not say this. No, I will. I will tell it to him afterwards. But there is a governance problem. Who is in charge? And who will push for it? And uh, what would you think? How would you ideally see this point moving on? Because Erasmus and Bologna was a bottom-up process. It was not something that came from the top. So what is missing in today's world that we get, I wouldn't call it Bologna, because Bologna is getting very cumbersome too. But how can we get to this recognition? What kind of leadership do we need? What kind of governance do we need? And can't we change the system, find a way whereby it's bottom up and you take things in charge? Question mark to the three of you. Um, yes, that, um, the main point for the uh, European Alliance uh, to uh, set up uh, uh, the best governance for the for the alliance. Um, yet we don't know if the the uh, European alliance must be just an agreement, or maybe a legal statute, a legal entity. I'm afraid uh, with the legal entity because I know that organisation consume resources, financial resources, um, uh, human resources, and I want uh, all the grants go to the student and the mobility and not to the organization. So we need to, to settle a, a good governance. For the instance, um, EU is just an agreement between the five universities. And we think that uh, we could um, stay this, uh, this point for five, about five years. But we are thinking about a legal statute. I think like the, the European Commission is uh, thinking about it. And maybe we will have, uh, in a few years, uh, a legal statute for the European University. European University, that doesn't solve the problem of the apprenticeship at okay. another level. It's, right. So I think, no, it's, it's absolutely true in the university level. But we have um, the, the point of sustainability for the, this university. European University. But then and, we understood. That was very clear in your first intervention. And, and so you we need, need more money. And we need a partnership. In, That's clear. With Laure, did you get it? Okay, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> Dita. Sure. I actually have a very drastic example from, from experience I know. Some seven years ago, Ms. Merkel uh, visited some six Eastern European countries at the governmental, at state level and met our prime ministers and presidents. And um, uh, in one of the uh, sessions which was devoted for education and cooperation in education, both higher and, and vocational, uh, she turned to our prime minister saying, would you really mind that your uh, school-based VET system gets more dualism and start collaborating with companies a little bit more? Imagine what prime minister could answer. <laughs> He said, well, of course we can. <laughs> when Ms. Merkel left, <laughs> Prime Minister approached ministry, I'm, I'm working for my minister, so I know that very well, and said, well, you know, we now have to start a <laughs> dualism in our VET system. Um, and seven years has gone, and in our VET law, in our legislation, work-based learning is an issue. So that was really the 
it was from bo uh, bottom down. But there are sometimes the, the situations where you can't go otherwise as from bottom down. For, I, I, I witness uh, the whole vocational education training reforms in my country done and initiated just by European Commission. In year 95, I started with VET reforms with the money of European Commission, even not being a member state of European Union at that time. But we were given money and we were given guidelines, what we had to do with that, and that the whole modernization started. And now, when my wet learners compete with German or French competitors in Euroskills, we can compete. <laughs> and they are company learned, and ours is our school teach. So uh, actually, uh, I would say that if uh, at very high uh, governmental level, some countries would agree on that. That would, that would work, for sure. Otherwise, we as, as uh, our vet schools, for instance, and technicums and lyceums, they have very good international cooperation uh, culture. So actually, even without such pressure from, from, from uh, but up, they, they are interested in that, and they actually love this process of international of, of cooperation. But as long-term mobility, uh, well, I was supporting my, my minister to prepare for the meeting where the long-term mobility was discussed as Erasmus part. And I think out of, out of 28 at that time European member states, 17 were against it. So. So, I, that's what I say, country to country. Agree, then it goes. <laughs> okay. Country to country. Country to country. It seems an interesting word. Andreas, you wanted to say something? Uh, well, yeah, but about the government's, uh, governance, I'd say, of course, there are very, many, many levels in Europe. We don't have differences only between European countries, but maybe sometimes even in national countries, different levels responsible for education and training. But I once heard that Europe is about unity and diversity, and maybe <laughs> they could agree on professional standards, for example, that make recognition easier. And uh, it would not be so much about giving away authority uh, anyway. They would keep the uh, authority themselves in the national countries or on different levels, but they would have to agree on a standardized systematic procedure for the recognition at least. Denied during the dinner, I gave the example to Jean of Tampere, where we had the problems between the justice ministers and the ministers for interior. And the whole file went up to the level of the heads of states in Tampere, and they decided with no of none of the ministers of justice, none of the ministers of interior, and they decided to handle. And I think I was, you know, we heard Mr. Macron this morning, so that's maybe one of the messages of today. So, okay, I think we still have seven minutes to go. Any question? No? Then I would ask each of you to tell us what you still have on your heart, what you would like to share with us, and what is, uh, what you, where you really would like this program to be in two years' time, knowing that there, lots, there is lots of money. Laure, Laure wants to spend. I talked to Laure because she's in charge of the French aspect, so French Erasmus Agency. So I think the idea is now to dream. So you have the magic stick. In two years' time, where would you like to be? And what do we have to settle? Who starts? Well, that's at the same time a tough and an easy question <laughs> as the first ones you ask. I'd say uh, in two years' time, um, I would like that there's more systematic recognition, that we've got more mobility and longer mobility. And uh, maybe something I didn't mention, of course, this goes, as you said, through a bottom-up approach, and this goes through all those mobility coordinators that are in the room as well. We really need them, and um, I would say that we need their support and that they have to uh, help us in this uh, respect to have this bottom-up approach and have initiatives that make this kind of mobility that is long and recognized that we'd all like to have come true. So mobility for apprenticeships, there is two terms, mobility and apprenticeships. So we, I think we have to develop either the mobility and the, the, the apprenticeships. Uh, if we develop the apprenticeship in France, 
with the company, we can uh, develop it abroad for the student. Um, so um, in two years, um, we are thinking about this master to be open in uh, apprenticeship, but we, we have to work with the company. We have a, a fora because we have to, uh, with, with the manager of this company, in order to, um, to determine the, the expectation of this company and uh, that the, the master will respond to the expectation. Well, I, I believe in, in, um, in that, that internationalization of skills and competences of our soon-to-be workers in, for our economies it has a very great added value. Because uh, when you just learn what, you, what your teachers and trainers can do in your country, and companies which are situated in your country, actually, that is, uh, those are limits. Those are limits. And, uh, and going somewhere else and, and on very motivated and very well-structured mobility and, and apprenticeship or internship, internship, which is not just sending for certain time higher education student and for that time he gets points back, credits back, but really to fill it with meaningful um, competences he can obtain in that partner country. Uh, that really helps for anybody in Europe. The stronger your native country becomes with the skills, excellence and uh, capacity, the better Europe is. So I would think that in two years' time, we have something, at least, discussed on how to remove obstacles for that at uh, institutional level and in uh, legislation level, because there are obstacles. The floor to you. Thank you. Um, and thank you to our three speakers. Thank you so much.